Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans. What's going on? We are back with another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans, Real Talk. In conjunction with the Sanchez Show, of course. Uh, we got a whole lot of sports to get into today, but uh, we uh, we decided to to just open up shop on a, on an off day. Um, I'm sure by now, if you don't already know, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure the the world knows at this point what happened on uh, Monday Night Football. Uh, the game was was actually canceled uh, because one of the one of the players on the Buffalo Bills safety. Uh, DeMar Hamlin uh, went into cardiac arrest uh, after making a tackle uh, last night with about five minutes and 18 seconds into into the game. Um, as a result of that, uh, the NFL decided to cancel the remainder of uh, the Monday Night Football game that featured the Buffalo Bills and uh, in the Cincinnati Bengals. Um First, before before we get into that, though, let me introduce my co-host because I know we're gonna we're gonna really uh, delve into the subject. Uh, Eric Sanchez, Legend in Two Games, what's going on, man? What's really good, bro? Um, first and foremost, you know we, we didn't get together New Year's Day, so Happy New Year's to to all the listeners, followers, and supporters, man. And um, you know, unfortunately, because of the the incident that took place yesterday. Um, you know, it's a little somber note to start off the year, but you know, we're gonna pick it up, man, no matter what. But definitely, you know, we, we got a lot to get into, man, and a lot of thoughts about yesterday's game. Yeah, um, it's something that none of us has ever seen uh before. Um, this was actually the first uh game that was has ever been uh canceled uh after its after its start. Um, if you haven't by now, I'm I mean, the video I'm sure is, is going viral right now. The actual hit, if you weren't watching the game live as it, as it went on, I mean, the entire sports media has pretty much been consumed uh, by last night's uh, injury. Um, I mean, and, and there were some record-breaking nights going on in other sports, but, you know, this injury has consumed – Pretty much everything in sports media. It's a, it's a tragic situation uh, that we're dealing with. Um, Demar Hamlin, man, and this, this is a tough one, Eric. You know, after t after taking that, well, making the tackle, but you know, sometimes you also taking that hit as well when you're making a tackle and and, and you know, offensive player and defensive player coming at each other at that uh, that speed. Um, you know, you also taking an impact as well. And um, it, in in the moment, Demar Hamlin actually stood back up immediately after the hit, um, and he may have been up. I want to say maybe three seconds before just kind of falling down, lifeless. Um, paramedics, you know, were on the scene after um, after a, a, a couple of minutes, um, and they wound up giving him CPR for about I want to say nine minutes. That's what the report said. Um, on the sidelines before ultimately having him taken to a to a nearby uh, hospital. Um, Eric, you know what what was going through your mind though? Because again, it seemed like a average hit, something that we've seen hundreds to thousands of times before. Um, but the you know obviously we can never tell the impact of a hit unless we're actually the person that's being hit but what was going through your minds um as as this is going down as this whole ordeal as the paramedics are on the field the trainers and everyone is on the field working on, on on him um shock and confusion um i was watching the game live it was arguably the biggest game of the regular season this year because of the playoff implications and because of how well both these teams have played and the Bengals, uh, you know, being the defending AFC champs, the Bills with a high probability of going to a Super Bowl. So they, they were going to be a lot of eyes naturally on the game. But as it played out, and as you mentioned, I saw the tackle, didn't think anything of it. I remember seeing the tackle and then grabbing my phone to look at something on my phone real quick. 
And then when I look back up, they're going to commercial break because the medical staff came on. So my first reaction was either someone got hurt away from the play or a possible concussion, um, which unfortunately is something that we've become too accustomed to at this point. And the irony that we're talking about this because we went into detail on Friday, on Friday Night's Live about Tua and head injuries and how the NFL is going to have to figure out a way to step in and save these young men from themselves. But as the commercial break continued to play on, that's when I kind of realized like something else was going on because for anybody who's watching the game, they come back from commercial break and every player has like this just glazed look over their eyes. Like they can't believe what's going on. And then Joe Buck said something that really stuck out to me. And then trip this is when I called you, Joe Buck said, they're working on him on the field and it doesn't look good. And I've been fortunate enough to watch a lot of sports, watch a lot of football. I've never heard that verbiage used to describe an injury on the field. We've mm-hmm. heard when, when guys break legs, unfortunately, or break arms or have really bad injuries, they'll say things like, you know, the medical staff's working on them and we don't want to show you, you know, or, or be warned. What you're about to see is pretty graphic. When he said they're working on him and it doesn't look good, my, my initial reaction, like, all right, so what are they working on that it doesn't look good? Um, which then, again, going back to the, the look of the players, uh, Josh Allen's walking around the field, teary-eyed and kind of glazed. Tredavious White was in full tears, emotions to the point where he couldn't even be consoled on the field. And then that's when I started to wonder, like, what did we just witness they come back from commercial break again, and that's when we hear that they've been performing CPR on this young man for nine minutes. And you and I were on the phone when Joe Buck says that in the background, and we both kind of said the same thing, like, CPR, like, what the hell is going on? And uh, like I said, just shock, confusion. Um, everyone in this instance is sharing the same feeling that this is the first time we've ever seen something like this because it's never happened on a football field. So we all were kind of processing and dealing with it at the same time. And I remember just kind of wondering, like, you know, what do we make of this? Like, well, you know, thinking about just so many different things, because like, I, I've, we've never seen it. We don't know what should be done next. We don't even know what our reaction should be to it. Because even though they're saying they perform CPR, we still didn't know what caused this to happen. Um, hmm. The tackle didn't look too out of the norm it looked like a standard tackle in the open field it wasn't a head-on collision um when they originally showed the replay they show him stand up and collapse so you don't know if it was you know uh something else that might have been lingering then we hear you know about cardiac arrest so it was just so much confusion in that moment and i think even throughout the night there was a lot of confusion um we're, we're only really 24 hours removed from yesterday's game and, and even now we still don't know everything that took place or what could have caused for him to have cardiac uh, cardiac arrest on the field in that moment. Yeah, um, yeah. We, again, because he he's, he was able to stand up for a second, so we don't at this point because there hasn't been too many updates uh, on his conditions other than the fact that he is still in in ICU uh, right now. Um, you know, in in the statement that his family made, just kind of thanking everyone um, for all of their all of their support during this time. I think, you know, one thing I love is, you know, with sports, at the end of the day, you know, it's always going to be a competition. It's always going to be a rivalry. But another big part of that is the family. Um, the NFL is is one big family. We can go to battle on that field, you know, 100 days in a row. But at the end of the day, if, if, if one of the family members is down in this way, the guys kind of rally together, um, you know, just to give whatever positive vibes and, and, and energy that they can because nobody wants to see something like that happen in the sport. Because, I mean, this is really an anomaly because, again, we've never seen anything anything like this at all. Um, I, I was actually, you know, wondering what the league was going to do, you know, in regards to the, the rest of the game. Because, you know, we see guys have bad injuries, you know, quite often. And it's all right, next man up, let's go. We, you know, the game got the game has to has to go on. So, you know, when they said they were gonna postpone it for about five minutes, 
I, you know, to give the players a chance to kind of to wrap their head around things and, and, and get back into the game, you know, I was like, all right, you know, but are we go, you know, because we don't know at this point, we don't know what's going on with this, with, with this kid, whether or not, you know, he's, a, he's alive or, or, or what, you know what I mean? Because all we had was, all right, we see the image of him being carried away in the ambulance and headed to the hospital, you know, but when you're hooked up to the machines, it's, you, you don't know, we don't know what's going on with him, whether he, whether he's alive or he's only, you know, up and breathing because he's on those machines. So, you know, then obviously we get the news maybe about another five, ten minutes after that, that the game is going to be completely canceled, um, which, you know, obviously I think in, in this situation was the, I mean, really, I think it was the only move that the NFL could have made in this situation because God forbid, and, and again, you know, prayers, you know, all the way up, you know, for this young man, but God forbid, had he lost his life and the NFL continued that game, that would have been a disgusting look mm-hmm. on, on the NFL. So they really made the only decision that they could. Um, oh man, I, it, it's, it's, it's terrible, you know, and I, um, I actually, when I, you know, cause Eric, you know, I've been filming, uh, youth football for forgot, you know, 10 years now. Um, and I've, I've seen twice, I've seen two kids get carted off the field and have to take, you know, take an ambulance out. But most recently, uh, was this past season, um, filming the Titans, um, last game of the, of the regular season. And, uh, one of the, one of the star wide receivers, uh, Josiah Brown, the kid on the opposing team comes in with his helmet down, you know, obviously, you know, an illegal hit. Cracks him upside the head. He he goes down, and when I tell you the feeling that you saw at that game last night, that was the feeling uh, at Holy Trinity when that young man got hit like that and went down, and he's down, laid out lifeless. I want to say for maybe 15, 20 minutes while they they're working on him, and then finally the ambulance comes and you know takes him off and he goes to the hospital. You know he has a, a really bad concussion. He is he is okay um, since since then. Um, but that feeling when you know it's one thing to see a guy get carted off and they going into the locker room, but they give you the thumbs up. It's a completely different feeling when you see a, a, a guy get taken out in an ambulance and you don't know whether or not that 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 man is going to be okay. That is a completely different feeling. That's the the feeling that you know. Was going on in that arena last night. I love seeing seeing both Bengals and uh, Bills fans together praying and 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 just kind of being positive in the moment because this is you know even from a fan standpoint you know we're invested in these in these players. These are people that that we look up to you know for for years upon years you know especially you know when when you love a team. And, and one of your favorite player, players gets hurt or goes down, you know, that's a big deal for us. We feel that pain, you know, just as well. So I love, you know, the camaraderie and everybody coming together. And, again, you know, continue prayers going out uh, to, to, to DeMar. And I'm wishing him the speediest of recoveries. I'm hoping, you know, that we'll hear some positive news coming tomorrow because I know, I mean, at this point it's kind of late in the day. So I don't think we'll we'll hear anything you know else new any new news anyway until tomorrow. But I'm really hoping and praying that 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 young man is able to bounce back from this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, thoughts and prayers go out to the Hamlin family. And I think in regards to yesterday, as as we talked about, you know, you have fans in the stands, you have young kids who don't know what's going on. Um, you know, we're fortunate enough to be watching the game and getting some sort of updates through the broadcast booth but the fans who are in the stadium they don't hear anything right they, they, the only chance they got of, of really knowing what's going on is through twitter or, or instagram or something so they don't know what's going on but i think the nfl handled it about as good as they could because there is no protocol for this they've never had to do this there's never been a situation where cpr had to be administered on the field to a yeah. player so 
the NFL is trying to gather as much information as well. Like what, what the heck is going on? You know, how's the young man doing? Is he going to survive? What are we supposed to tell his teammates now? Because his teammates are confused. Uh, mm-hmm. What are we supposed to tell the Bengals? Because they don't know what to do at this point. So I think the league handled it about as well as you could. As you mentioned, the only option was to postpone and now eventually cancel the game. Um, it's unfortunate that there were some people on social media who felt like, oh, the, the league got to do this or the league got to hurry up. The league don't got to hurry up and make any decision because the league is, one, trying to make sure this young man is okay. And then, two, you got over 100 players on the field that we've got to explain to them what's going on as well. Because yes. it's not as simple as just cancel the game. We got – a staff and a whole team from Buffalo that's in town. Are we supposed to tell them to wait until we decide if we're going to replay this game or not? Are we letting them go home tonight? Are we even letting people go to the hospital to see them? Like there's so many other arrangements that need to be made in that moment that it, it does take a little time. And like you mentioned, 20 minutes later, we, we got the official word. All right, the game is canceled officially and we're going to figure out the rest of it from here on out. But the league did, did about as good of a job as they could do. Again, very unique situation. I went back and I really like I really tried to find a, something that could be similar in any way, shape or form to this, because I felt this situation was just so unique to what we saw yesterday. There is no situation that's even close to this. The only thing that's that's cl- similar was Hank Gathers in the 90s at Loyola Marymount when he collapsed and did pass away on the court. Yeah. But he did have a heart condition and there were some other factors involved there that ultimately led to his passing. But in this case, from what we've heard, you know, Hamlin had no prior health issues. Yeah. Um, as we saw, the tackle was routine. It wasn't something that was like that was out of the norm of the game of football. So for him to then have cardiac arrest leads to all these other questions. Um, and and again, just a lot of confusion surrounding yesterday, man. But thoughts and praise to his family, man, because we are hoping uh for the best possible outcome and and it's a, it's it's bigger than football. Like everyone else has said, I don't want to make it seem like I'm unique in saying that. It's bigger yeah. than football. You know, we just want the best for the young man. Thanks. And, and, and you know, Eric, you mentioned, you know, the kids and whatnot, you know, and you know, you know, just the day before that, I was at the Baltimore you know, Ravens, nephews, yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers game, you know, in the stands. And that was my both of my nephews' first time being at a football game, you know, and, and, they, bo- and they both play football. They're both playing youth football right now. And I and I just when I saw that happen, I just thought to myself, you know, I think obviously you never want anything like that to happen, but I'm thankful that that didn't happen while I was taking my nephews because that's a traumatic experience. Now that if that's your first time being at a football game, especially as a kid, and you see something like that that we've never seen before, where a game had to actually end because a player gets hurt, you know, that in itself is, is it can be a very traumatic experience, you know, so. And I'm like, there was a kid behind us, you know, this amazing kid. He was like, he was the number one Ravens fan. Got to be. He, the whole game, he's shouting. And it's so it's so funny. It's so cute. And, you know, when the Steelers come back into, into that game, that little boy starts crying. And he's about, he got to be about six, seven years old. But he just starts bawling out crying because that's how invested these kids get into it. So I can only imagine, you know, the kids in that stadium uh, last night to have to to be in the in the you know in the arena for something like that and then to know all right that injury was so bad that we have to leave the stadium there's no more football tonight yeah yeah i mean like you said you and i both have been fortunate to go to plenty of sporting events right Mm -hmm. now i can only speak for myself but i'm pretty sure you probably share the same feeling a lot of the excitement I get walking into an arena or stadium dates back to when I was a kid and my first time being able to go. My first professional game was at, you know, the old Shea Stadium with my grandmother. Mm-hmm. And I still remember what it looked like as you're entering in to go to your seat and you see how big the field is. And as a kid who's watching it at home and now I'm actually here and I see how this all plays out, you know, even to this day, when we walk into the garden, I still love that feeling of being able to see the whole court and seeing everybody and having that energy. So, unfortunately, there probably was a young boy or girl there yesterday who this was their first game. And this is the experience they had to leave with. Like you said, (laughs) to the points where now your parent got to tell you, all right, now it's time for us to go home. But they don't understand it. Like, what happened? What's going on? Why are we leaving? You know, they they don't get it. And it's just so many layers, man. 
you know, Hammer's mom was there yesterday, man. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, she, yeah. yeah, travel to see him play on, on, you know, major Monday night game on the road. Imagine the confusion going on in, in their seats. You know, I don't even want to think about, but just imagine what they were dealing with at that moment. Because again, yeah. they don't have the luxury of a broadcast booth telling them, "Oh, this is what's going on." It's they are literally being pulled from their seats. Like you need to come down the field level. Yeah. So it, it's just so many things, man. That that surrounded yesterday. I think a lot of the former players did a great job of articulating um, just the mindset. Uh, Ryan Clark, you know, yeah. I thought did a great job today of, of breaking down not only his personal experience, but again, the mindset of most players. They do. They sacrifice their bodies. They put themselves in harm's way to chase a dream, but also to provide for their family. And, you know, you never want it to be that way. You don't want to come off the field that way. You don't you don't ever want it to be like that. man. Yeah. So once again, uh, you know, we, we continue to send our prayers out to DeMar Hamlin. Uh, we are wishing you a speedy recovery. And uh, definitely sending out positive vibes and strength uh, to to his family and, and and his friends and to the to the players because you know they take it just as hard as anybody. You know when you see one of your brothers go down, you take that you know extremely hard. So you know just want to send positive vibes I, out to out to everybody right now. I want to send uh, major respect and props to Stephon Diggs because. Stephon Diggs, as a leader of that team, he tried to speak to the team when it all happened. They realized, you know, this ain't going to work. We got to figure it out. When the game was was called, the guys, most of the guys, most of the, the team flew back to Buffalo. He stood in Cincinnati uh, and said, you know, I can't get on that flight until I know how he's doing. And there's the clip when the report, the news reporter is actually speaking in front of the hospital. And guess who's pulling up in the background? Stephon Diggs by himself. I think that just showed great leadership. And again, I, I have so much respect for that because like you said, they're all brothers and they all care about each other, but this was still a dude who was like, nah, there's no way that I can fly back home until I at least see him and know what's going on here. Um, you know, major, major respect to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Big shout out to, to Stefan Diggs. And again, cause you, you got to think about the trauma that he's dealing with mm -hmm. right now as well. So, you know, and yeah, and we got to two prayers. I know people have been talking about it. T Higgins, um, you know, obviously he's the player that's being tackled when everything happens. But hearing today from some of the local reporters in Cincinnati, I didn't realize that uh, they actually have a relationship because T. Higgins worked his camp this summer. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they actually became friends because of Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd, uh, former Pitt alumni. So they have they have some ties there. And I can only imagine what T is feeling like, you know, this is somebody that you develop some sort of relationship with off the field. And then you guys are involved in a play that, you know, it's going to live in infamy now because it's it's historic for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. And you got to also look at the, the, the mental trauma that he's possibly dealing mm -hmm. with right now as being on the other side of that hit. Mm -hmm. You know, so, that, it, yeah, you're right. There's so many layers to this thing. Um, and again, we, we but the most important thing is that we need, um, you know, for this young man, DeMar Hamlin, to to get well, get better. Um you know, because obviously that this is this is the last thing you ever want to see when you turn on the, on the TV or when you go to a football game. This is the last thing you ever want to see. So we're really hoping, you know, and praying for this this young man to to bounce to be able to bounce back, uh, you know, from this from this injury. Um, in regards to the NFL and uh, what their plans are, because again. The, the game itself, you know, now that we've kind of broken down uh, the situation with, with DeMar, the game itself was a very big uh, game that had playoff implications on both sides of the football. You have the Bills who are, who are tied in first place but have the tiebreaker over the Kansas City Chiefs right now for home field throughout the playoffs. And then on the other side of that, you have the Cincinnati Bengals who are in first place right now and um but you know there's the chance that the ravens could still steal the still the uh division um with them with this game and then them playing each other uh in week 18. so as of right now the the game has been canceled it will not be uh, played this week the league has not announced when they will 
make up this game. Um, so from that note, we're gonna have to all uh, wait and see what the league is gonna is gonna do. The game has to has to be played at at, at some point. Um, but as of right now, there's no timetable uh, for for the game to to be rescheduled. Yeah, and and there's uh, you know from the football side of things. Now that we switch yes. over, um, this is big because you're talking about right now potentially the number two and number three seed in the AFC. If the playoffs were to go the way we expect them to in terms of what teams would win their games, this would be a second round matchup in the playoffs, and Without any resolution on this game, Buffalo would have home field advantage in that game. So that's a big difference, um, you know, going to Buffalo in mid to late January as opposed to playing in Cincinnati where the weather might be a little more favorable for you. So th there's that aspect of it. Um, I don't think the league is going to replay it just because we're so late in the season. You got to remember, if they're not going to make it up this week, this Sunday is it. This is week 18. And so the playoffs will be starting the following week. So there's no way that you would try to squeeze a makeup game in before a playoff game. I just think that would be a major disadvantage for both these teams to try to do that. Uh, I have a feeling that the league either will treat it as these two teams only played a 16 game schedule or they'll treat it as a tie. Um, but they're, they're major, there's major fallout from the football side of things because now the Bengals still got to play that game against the Ravens on Sunday for the division. Uh, Buffalo may have missed an opportunity to be a number one seed and not have to worry about going to Kansas City. So th those are things that in a few weeks will mean more than they do right now. But the business side of it still means something. And like I said, it, there, there's, you know, fallout from that. Yeah, like, God forbid, because I had this happen earlier in the season where, you know, the teams hadn't had their bye week. The league, I'm sure, would have just rescheduled the game, worked, fixed the schedule so that they, you know, they both could, um, you know, just play the game on their bye week. I'm sure they would have just combined their bye weeks, you know, first things around um to do something like that. But yeah, at this point when you you, you have week 18 is, is right is right around the corner is and then you have the playoffs coming right after that. Very unfortunate situation for the Bills because if this game doesn't get played and you know and let's just say like you said they give they give the they give it a tie. So neither team takes the loss but neither team gets the win now if you're the Bills, right, you lose out on, on home field advantage because now as long as the Chiefs win week 18, they're going to have the best record in football. You lose the tiebreaker, so that's over with. I think the, the Bengals are a little more fortunate because without taking the loss, they're gonna, they, they automatically now, even if they lose next week to, to the Ravens, they'll still have the better record. Um, so for them, you know, I guess it's a little bit somewhat beneficial, um, if they, if they go that route, um, again, if this was, if, if this was the fourth quarter and they cancel a game, I'm sure they just, whoever's up at that point, they just give the game, give the, the, the win to, um, but again, we're talking about five minutes and 18 seconds into the game. There's no way that you could give either team the win in that situation or the loss for that matter. So I, you know, honestly, the only fair thing to do in a situation just because there's not enough time to really get this game played, you know, and they both get the, you know, would be for, for both teams to just take the tie. So, you know, again, this is something we've never seen before. So the NFL has their hands full. Um, no, I mean, honestly, the only other thing I could maybe even think of, but even though now they said it's not going to be played this week would have been to maybe have the game, played on 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 Thursday since there's no Thursday night game this week and then extend uh next week to Tuesday and they've done that before had games on Tuesday that, that they've had to postpone so we've seen um you know that was, those are our our big exciting days when we get Tuesday uh football extra yeah. days I think I think they and this goes back to yesterday I think this is why they weren't so quick to just say all right the game is canceled because they were going to try to find a way to accommodate everyone yes um even if they didn't even if they didn't finish yesterday's game i think deep down if they could have found a way to accommodate and say hey look all right we won't finish the game now but can we possibly finish this on tuesday or wednesday and that way buffalo doesn't have to fly home yet and maybe we just let the guys you know get a full 48 hours 
to kind of let the emotion settle. Yeah. Um, but obviously through discussions with the, with the NFLPA and just the other schematics, like you mentioned, because even, even if you play Thursday, right, let's say Cincinnati Buffalo Thursday game. Well, they both play Sunday now. So yeah. is that too quick of a turnaround? Are we risking injury now to guys, you know, and then if we push them to Monday, is that fair then to Baltimore and, and the Patriots, the two teams that are going to play these teams on Sunday, because both those teams are also playing for a playoff spot. Yeah. Right. So now like, is it fair to them now that we're pushing them to Monday? And then it just becomes this ongoing domino effect. Like, all right, well, if we push that to Monday, then what happens next Sunday with those playoff games? Cause now if I played Monday, if I'm Baltimore and I played Monday, now I've been put at a disadvantage for the playoff weekend on a shorter week. So it, it's all these other factors that go into it. As you mentioned, you know, if this was a month ago, the league would have been able to figure it out. Yeah. But we're just so close to the finish line of the season that it's very difficult to get this game in without putting someone at a disadvantage. No matter what, someone's going to be at a disadvantage. I don't think Buffalo's in the right – that the Bills themselves are in the right mental space to play this game right now, and then you run the risk of somebody else getting injured. Yeah. And then, you know, like now – and like I said, then it just – this continued trickle-down effect. Like, well, Buffalo had to play Thursday. They got to turn around and play Sunday again. And it's just a lot going on. The league is is probably going to have to just chalk it up. They just we're probably going to have to chalk it up. It sucks for both these teams um, because somebody I, – I'm sure, bro. I'm sure in a few weeks when we talk about the playoffs, we're going to circle back to this game and be like, that changed everything in the trajectory of the AFC because we don't even know what mental state Buffalo is going to be in no matter yeah. what happens. No matter what happens, we don't even know – if mentally they could shake this off to even play a game even two weeks from now. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, you know, if once we get the, if we, depending on which way we get the word <coughs> in regard to, to how he's doing, you know, that could change, uh, change a lot as well, you know, because yeah, when, once you get that, when you get that thumbs up, you know, yeah, you, you get that extra motivation all right, man, we got to do this for our guy, you know, but who knows, God forbid, if it goes the other way, what that's going to do to the to the mental state of the entire organization, not even just the players. You got to think the coaching staff, the GM, the owner, you know, they all build relationships with these with these players. This is – these organizations are families, you know. Everybody got different roles, but at the end of the day, these organizations are families, so yeah, everybody's affected by this on from the top, you know, from ownership all the way down to the to the last man on on the bench. Everybody is, is affected by this. So who knows what the what their mental state will be like if if they'll be able to to go out there and and you know and, and play football and, and, and make a, a run for a team that's an actual legitimate Super Bowl contender. We don't you know we don't know. We don't um and it's a it's a, a great point, man. And as you were saying it, it made me think about something too. And you know, God forbid, I hope we do not end at that conclusion. But I will say, in terms of of just trying to find out what that mental state would be, the 2004 2005 Indianapolis Colts, they were 14 and 0, and then unfortunately, Tony Dungy's son took his own life. That team lost two out of their last three regular season games, and they lost their first playoff game. The very next year, they came back and won the Super Bowl. Every player on that team, Peyton Manning, first one said, when we suffered that loss of Tony Dungy's son, we were never the same. Because as you mentioned, these organizations, they spend so much time around each other. They are family, bro. And God forbid, if DeMar Hamlin, if, if this goes left and it goes wrong, and I, again, I'm saying God forbid because I'm praying for the best. I want the best for that young man. If it goes that route, the Buffalo Bills will never be the same. And I hope we're not having that conversation in another week or two. Yeah, I I, I agree a thousand percent. Um, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait and see. And again, you know, this is this is one of them episodes, you know, where it's gonna be this is gonna be a lot of prayer, man, a lot of positive energy that we're gonna be sending in the way in the direction of this young man because everybody wants to see him be okay. You know, and get his get get back to to his life, get back to his family, get back to his friends. Um, you know, everybody wants to see that. This, you know, we're we're all in agreement on that. This is your African King is coming, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Live from the king. Uh huh. This is real fans, real talk. Real fans.
is real talk, we as real as you thought Real 